they go out and work so hard on a Saturday so that the rest of us can all have a party. So I always make it great. And I don't know how much I appreciate it. All right, our next speaker is a junior sociology and math major from Clemson University. Uh, speaking on creationism shouldn't be allowed in science classrooms. It is Hannah Goldstein. So imagine that you're in a history class and you actually get all the way up to World War II and you notice that your professor never mentions the Holocaust. You think that's pretty weird, so you mention it. And she says, well, the senator in this state is a Holocaust denier. And he's made a law that if we're going to talk about the Holocaust, we have to also talk about all the facts that Holocaust deniers believe in. So clearly that's wrong. A politician can't just push their own beliefs into a history class. So why is that allowed in science classrooms? Across the country, politicians are trying to shove out evolution and put in a Judeo-Christian creation story. This is one of my dad's favorite topics, so I hear a lot about it from the pro-evolution standpoint. For this paper, I also researched a lot of the procreationism points. This is a major issue in America today. I'm sure everybody has seen the Jesus fish bumper sticker. Cre uh, evolutionists decided they wanted their own, so they came up with the Darwin fish. And clearly that's going to offend some Christians, so they came up with Jesus eating the Darwin fish. <laughs> and there's a lot more offensive ones on the internet if you would like to look that up. This is affecting our education. James Owen wrote a 2006 article for National Geographic that said that only 33% of United States adults believe in evolution. That's compared to 80% of adults in Europe. That's related to the fact that many American adults don't understand basic biology concepts. Now many scientists say that evolution is the foundation for modern biology. So by not accepting evolution, we're not understanding any biology concepts and we're lowering our international standards. I'm gonna refute some creationist arguments to show that evolution, not creationism, belong in science classrooms. The first thing that creationists do is appeal to the scientific community. They say evolution is just a theory. Well, Eugene Scott wrote in her 2005 book evolution versus creationism, that evolution is a fact. Things do change. That offends the most extreme creationists who believe that everything is on earth exactly how God made it. Nothing has ever changed. It's also a theory, and that upsets more creationists. A civilian theory is just a guess, but Eugene Scott wrote that a scientific theory is a logical construct of facts, hypotheses, and laws that explain a natural phenomenon. A scientific theory has to be falsifiable, and it has to come from natural origins. So you can't say it's just a theory. For a long time in America, we had equal time laws. Those were ruled unconstitutional in the 1987 court case, Edwards versus Aguilar. They said, you can't teach creationism and evolution. You just can't teach creationism at all. They did say, you can have a scientific critique of the scientific theory, which is how creationists came up with intelligent design. Intelligent design is the same thing as creationism, but instead of God, it's just an intelligent designer. It's still not science because an intelligent designer isn't a natural phenomenon. Dennis Overby wrote a 2005 article for the New York Times about how Kansas politicians are trying to completely redefine science to include supernatural origins. Now that would stop biological research because at any time the researcher could say, well, this is how God made it, I can't go any farther in the end. Lenny Flank wrote in his 1995 Debunking Creationism website that even if you could turn creationism into a scientific theory, it still wouldn't be taught as an alternative to evolution because evolution doesn't have anything to do with the creation of the world. Creationists like to say that there's a lot of scientific support, but they've never had anything published in a peer-reviewed scientific journal. Michael Hopkins wrote in his 2003 website exploring the creation and evolution controversy about the Steve Project. So first, the Discovery Institute, which supports intelligent design, published a list of 103 scientists who said they're skeptical of evolution and we should explore creationism a little more. Now, very few of these scientists were biologists and none of them studied evolution at all. So the National Center
Center for Science Education came back with a list of mostly biologists who agreed that evolution is the right thing, we should go along with it. And they only published the names that were some derivative of Steve, like Stephanie or Stephen, which they estimated is about 1% of scientists. They still had 367 names. So even if there's a disproportionate amount of scientists named Steve, that's still more than three times the amount of scientists that don't believe in evolution. After they've exhausted their scientific roots, creationists appeal to religion. They say, only teaching evolution is anti-religious. Now, Eugenie Scott wrote in her Evolution versus Creationism book about the 1982 McLean versus Arkansas case, in which clergymen sued to keep creationism out of science classrooms because they said it wasn't science. And if clergymen don't think that's anti-religious, they probably know what they're talking about. Lenny Flank wrote in his Debunking Creationism website about the really strict guidelines that creationists have for a creation story that would be included in a scientific classroom. A creation story would have to have the Great Flood, which means that any Hindu or really any Eastern religion couldn't have a creation story told. So they probably think that that's anti-religious. And really the biggest argument against including creationism in a science classroom from a religious standpoint comes from Craig Nelson's 2005 article, Design Isn't Science. He points out that if we're going to teach critiques of evolution, we're also going to have to teach critiques of creationism. And the teacher's going to feel like she is directly attacking a student's beliefs. Remember, many evolutionists do believe in a creation story, and they're completely fine with a creation story being taught in a religious class. So I've shown why the creationist arguments don't hold any water. You can refute people that attack evolution and say it's just a theory. Remember, gravity is also just a theory. You can show that creation stories do have their place. If your state tries to put an evolutionist just a theory sticker on science textbooks, please write your congressperson because as I said, this is affecting education. And most importantly, remember that religion and science can coexist. Thank you.